Welcome on the place, right? It is today, it is uh, March the 24th or 20, uh, we in the, if you, you're from Europe, you're English, you say 24th of March, right? Doesn't really matter what it is. And normally I don't talk about the date, but uh, especially today, I want to say something about today because uh, March 24 is a special date. That's the, namely the birthday of my dad. Happy birthday, daddy. And my daddy um, uh, is uh, 96 years old. Can you believe it? Nine, wow. 96 years old, yeah. So it's uh, it's a challenging time. The man is old, right? He, um, he is doing actually really well for his age, you know. Not that you called in the place to hear about my dad, but I'm going to tell you anyhow. So, um, but, you know, uh, and, and, and we talk about it just a little bit because there's so much, you know, talk about uh, COVID-19 or the coronavirus anyhow, but uh, my parents are very affected by it. And, uh, and I tell you why, first of all, they are old. So they are in um, what we call the, the group with uh, a lot of risk. Now, you know, this sound may be really bad, but my dad probably is okay if he would go to the other side because he's 96. And he believed he had a very good life with his ups and his downs. So, but they have to, and they live in a, some sort of a, you know, assisted living home. So my dad lives, uh, lives uh, all the way here, right? He lives all the way here and my mom lives all the way there, but they live in the same complex because my dad, my mom has Alzheimer. So she can, she needs to have a little bit more than supported living. She needs to, you know, be in a closed, um, I don't know how, what's the proper name of it, but let's call it a closed department or something. But my dad can go to her or we can pick up my mom and then go uh, back to visit my dad. But that all is not possible anymore. So we cannot visit either one of them. Uh, so my siblings cannot go them, to them and they typically go every day. And one of the things that my dad suffers from, and we're getting very quickly to, po to the point of today, is he suffers a lot from loneliness, you know, and it, that, that happens a lot to old people. We are not aware of it. Sometimes we read about it in the news that people suffer from loneliness. You think, how is that possible nowadays, right? But if you're dead old, and if you're that isolated, um, you know, and you have many kids, but your kids are not around you the whole time. So uh, loneliness, you only feel when you're alone. <laughs> Does that make sense? You know, you don't feel, you know, there are conditions actually that you keep feel lonely in a big, you know, in a big crowd. Uh, I do have that once in a while that I still feel lonely. You know? But that is a, that's a matter of being connected. Do you feel connected in some sort of a way, right? So that's a whole different, that's a whole different topic. Interesting too, by the way. But my dad, you know, feels a lot about loneliness. And, and he feels that, you know, if we go to a visit, uh, to be honest, you know, uh, you know, if anyone listened on my family to the place, then I don't send me immediately a hate mail or something. But yeah, now my dad is sometimes very grumpy. So it's really hard to stay a little bit longer than an hour. Uh, it's, to be honest, sometimes I sit there for five minutes and I think, oh, let me go away. So I found a new tactic. I just go there with my laptop and I sit working there and I can stay there for like four or five hours. And, and I was happy uh, not knowing that he would talk to my sister said, yeah, John comes all the way from the United States and he sit with me the whole day. And you know what he does the whole day? He sits behind his computer, like I'm not there. But the point is, if I talk with him, then he is so grumpy. <laughs> so you can never do it well. And, and we should be very forgiving to our parents because uh, I think at least they meant well. They probably did a lot of things wrong in their life and they know it better than we do. Trust me, right? I, I, know, I, know. I wrote some things about my dad in my book and almost the moment I wrote it, I already regret it. But sometimes, you know, that's how I feel about it. But he's a good man. And he's 96 year old. So last but not least, I want to say to him, happy birthday, dad. Okay, this is my uh, little balloon. Not, not a good balloon, but that, that's my balloon. Right, right there, right. Okay, so while well, he's 96, so it's, uh, it looks like an old balloon for an old man. For an old man. So happy birthday. That was uh, it. My shout out to a person. And next time, maybe that's something we should do in the place. If you have a shout out, to another person maybe next week, then just write me a message and we just, you know, put it right in the air and do a shout out to a person like that. So today was my dad. Okay, that's that. The topic of today is a motivation. Now, as I already said in my newsletter, 
uh, or in our newsletter, you know, is there really a title that we should talk about motivation today, right? You know, don't you think there are other things going on in the world? Yeah, there are other things going on in the world and we call it COVID-19, but here's the thing, sometimes it feels like that's the only thing that's going on in the world and that is not true either. Now, I know it's really important and we need to take it very serious. Uh, like I said, you know, it is literally knocking at your door nowadays, right? So uh, just a few weeks ago, you know, we read about it in the newspaper. We all were, you know, worried about it. I have family in the Netherlands. I was maybe a little bit more worried than other people. Other people have family in other areas of the world. So we're all worried, uh, more or less. And, and in a way, we kind of also make a little bit jokes of it at that time. But then it happened not this Friday, but last Friday, right? Something, at least for my world, switched, right? Suddenly, the world stopped and made it slightly different. People lost their work. I couldn't go to the studio anymore to teach, right? So we have no uh, things. And then in other areas, they have, believe it or not, they have suddenly a lot more work. You know, if that's uh, possible, and um, I'm and uh, I'm really I'm really sorry, guys, but I have to interrupt you for just just one second. There's something going on in my house. It's not like a ghost or something, but I, I have to solve that. We can talk. <laughs> What is it like in the Netherlands right now? Um, okay, it's um, quiet. Uh, the stores are closed. Um, the most of the, the people uh, stop their work. Um, okay, I'm really sorry about that, guys. It's, it's, also on Facebook, it interrupted a little bit my flow, but it had to be solved. Um, what was it? Ah uh, no 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 not important not important. All right so um, so um, so yeah the world kind of stopped like I just stopped <laughs> for a moment uh, this uh, <laughs> this uh, this call or this whatever this is um, and uh, so suddenly stop and you completely surprised like I mean it's I didn't play it at all I really had to, this little uh, true interruption and uh, it's like was well, someone you know called you and you didn't want to pick up but you did it anyhow. Uh, and, and that's how it felt. And I was sitting with, um, with actually, I was sitting with Irene in a coffee bar. And, and she said, wow, I got a lot of emails in my inbox and a lot of work got canceled. And, and, and that happened to Irene. That happened to a lot of other places. We didn't know exactly what would be going on in the studio that I work in Dallas. If you don't know what I do in Dallas, then often uh, we teach. But... <clears throat> We didn't know, but in a few days we, we went online and it felt like we found a solution. Um, a lot of my private lessons got canceled and, and rightfully so, right? Because, you know, people need to take a little bit more literally distance from each other, at least physical. And, but the impact is, is big. So now we have another thing to talk about, right? So that's a little bit on our mind. Now we, um, we go uh, in... Uh, we don't call it uh, we don't call it uh, a lockdown here in in our country. Can, you know, t a state is divided in counties, and per county they decide what's going on. I'm I'm just explaining this for the non uh, non US people, right? So um, so every state has its own policy on how to react to what's going on, and in every state, every county can do that all uh, by themselves, right? So so it's not a call to, a called uh, a lockdown. Um, but it means that uh, at, at this time, you know, actually starting this morning, uh, we cannot go to work, right? We cannot come together with a lot of people. Privately, of course, you can. Uh, we can still do groceries or we can still go to the doctor. But you could, you could only imagine how this impacted people who actually normally go to uh, a place to work. Let, let's say you work in a restaurant or you work in an office. Now, if you work in an office, often you could also do this from home. So actually this morning, someone else called me already and you know, talked to me, hey, my work actually hasn't changed so much. I can actually still do it from the computer at home. So, and other people say, you know, my, changed, my work has changed a lot. And last but not least, a lot of people who are, um, who are uh, just don't have any work at all. Uh, some people are, 
pretty much affected because they know someone who is affected by the virus. So in a, in a, in a very short time, the US jumped from almost none exist on the number of COVID-19 virus uh, impacted. We go to number three in the world. Uh, number one is, is Italy. Uh, number two is still China, although the number is going, thank God, that's another shout out, is going down very, very, very fast. You know, let's not forget that there are also positive things in the world going on. Uh, also in Korea, by the way, and in Japan, and those were the three countries that in the beginning were very much affected by this, the numbers are going down. So I'm very hopeful. But if you, if you think about this, then, and you come out as a life coach with a word like, you know, I think we should stay motivated. Yes, everyone is immediately on the table said, yes, Sean, let's do that. Let's stay motivated, <laughs> right? Don't you think there's, we should talk about other things? And then I say, like what? Don't you think we need motivation now more than ever? Right? I, I think we do. I think we need to see motivation slightly different, you know, because there are a lot of things that you cannot do anymore, right? One of the things to get motivated is give yourself among people and be with very with a lot of enthusiasm, right? You know, go to a sports club and, you know, exercise. You know, that will be a really good thing to motivate. Guess what? It's not going to work right now, you know? And, and very likely that if you stay in the house, that there are a lot of people who are also affected by the same thing. So they might not be the first people to go to, to be motivated and get motivated. Does it make sense? You might have a kid. And if the kid is very young, I mean, they think, uh, you know, the first day they're kind of happy and peppy to stay home and don't have to go to school. But, you know, after four or five days, they get so bored out of their mind. You know, you don't know anymore what to do with them. No, please, Sean, don't talk to me about motivation. I already took a lot out of my motivation to call in your pl the place. Right, so there's a lot of things that you think that is the farthest off my mind to be motivated. Well, guess what? If you think that, that should be the first thing on your mind, right? Think, how do I get myself motivated with? Now, if you, um, if you think about motivation, right? Motivation has always something to do. You go from one point to the other point, right? Now, so think about it like this, right? Um, let me do... Um, let me do it like this. Think about you need to go to somewhere, right? So let's say this is the horizon, right? And at the horizon, you know, and, in, and then you have here, you have, uh, well, let me see if I am very creative today. That if you can, if you can guess what that is, then, then, you know, type that into what I'm doing right now, right? So here, you know, the sun needs to come out tomorrow. <laughs> well, too much coffee, too much coffee in, uh, in challenging time, right? Ah, uh, you get it already, right? So that is the road to the horizon, right? Maybe I should point it a little bit more. Um, but anyhow, maybe at the end of the road, you have, and say this is the road of your dreams, right? This is the road of your dreams. And some people think about, you know, a nice house and no, it's not look like, like a nice house it looks like a shack but anyhow you know a nice shack maybe <laughs> and uh, and and maybe there is you know if you're a girl and looking for a man this is a handsome man could be me you know and and, <laughs> and if you do some family planning then maybe there is a kid uh, in that on that horizon um maybe there is uh, you know, maybe there's money on that horizon you know, what else could there be on that horizon? You know, if you have an idea what there be, could be in the, on the horizon, uh, I'm a guy, so, you know, you know what, what do I know about these things? You know, after all, right, maybe there is, uh, I, and now I'm, you know, I did it. I did it. Someone gave me this equipment and, <laughs> and now I'm so distracted about, it. maybe there's a car on the horizon that you want, right? So, you know, a few weeks ago, that was really good. We were all going there. We just know some, some people need to get motivated and they called me saying, hey, I don't know what is there on my horizon, right? Can you help me, Jean, to find what is there on that horizon that I could pursue? I said, sure, you know, take one of my fancy coaching packages and I will tell you what's on that horizon, right? And then I come up with something very lame and then i say you know okay now i definitely did it you know there is i want to write passion 
but I'm not sure if I can do it really well. You know, pe shun. Not bad. Not bad, eh? Is that, no, it's, not bad. it's not bad at all, right? So, see, that's what I often do. I often say, you know, that's at the horizon. If you know what's in the horizon, oh, that's actually not correct, right? It, it actually should be your destiny. Well, I'm not going to write that. I, I definitely am <laughs> not going to write that. But I practice it, you know, I did this on purpose, right? So, uh, I'm just going to write D for destiny. So, you know that if you, if you locked in really late, you have no clue what I'm doing, but you catch up really fast, right? So that's the D for destiny, right? And on your road to keep driving, you need passion because that's your driver, right? That is that makes you drive, right? But to turn on the key in the car of passion, and I'm sorry, I'm a guy, I just take this, you know, the turn on the key and it, that's called motivation. And that car has come to a stop right because we don't have any motivation anymore because what happened with the world we really don't know anymore what happened with the world right we we a lot of people they don't even see this anymore right see how that works the sun didn't come out tomorrow you know the sun actually completely disappeared well not in the sky in dallas but you know what i mean right and there is this thing right in front of us and you meet that a lot of times in your life and it's now showed up as something ugly that the whole world is facing now how often does that happen that we all facing the same thing so can anyone already know what i'm trying to draw here you know yeah that's kind of a that's kind of a wall, right? A roadblock, and in this case, this roadblock is called COVID nineteen, and 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 I'm taking it very serious, by the way, guys. And I'm just doing this. I'm just taking this out because I want you to see my face. Not that it is so interesting to look at my face, but it's a little bit more polite than I'm not showing the face. But um, so that's it. And uh, but behind behind that wall that i was just uh, you know trying to draw for you I, I don't know i hope you saw that it was a wall there is still that that big d from destiny it's still there right we just don't know how to get there anymore because we don't see it right but it's still there and so so you need to so it's harder to get motivated when you have a roadblock and if you were an athlete you know that Every time when you hit a roadblock, it's harder to, you know, keep going. But at the time of roadblocks, that's really what you need to think about most. How can I push through these walls? And maybe there is something written on the wall. That's what a lot of coaches don't tell you, right? That you need to learn first, right? Now, I'll give you an example. And uh, I spoke to some people, and believe it or not, and, and some people already predicted COVID-19, uh, besides that, it, it takes a lot of casualties and, and, and my prayers go out to them and some of them actually come pretty close by. I said yesterday to someone, if you know someone by name and that person is already affected by a brother or a, a student or something uh, by COVID-19, that's pretty close by. That's only one circle away, right? Two in this case, right? So I'm here, another circle of people that I know, but those people are already in, infected, right? So this is me, right? I think I can do me uh, in reverse. This is me, right? So I'm here. That's my world. You know, the world around me are the people that I know. But if there are people around them and now being affected, you know, they're just two steps away. It's only a matter of time for a lot of people, and I don't want to scare you, to do that. So, man, what what are you talking to me about motivation that is scary i need to close my door i need to you know i live in texas so don't get insulted here i need to you know clean up the gun who knows what <laughs> what's going to happen next right a lot of people do that did you know for instance that at, at um cavalas that's here uh, i'm not sure if i pronounce that name well but that's a gun shop here around the corner he was more busy than ever 
it was seriously more busy. It's not only busy at Kroger, which is like the Albert Heijn from, uh, from the United States. Albert Heijn is a grocery store. In, uh, it's not only very busy there, so people don't only stock up on toilet paper, but they also stock up on guns and ammunition. Now you could say, oh, you guys, crazy Texas. But the only thing is, what do you learn from it? Now, I haven't figured out what I learned from why people stock up toilet paper. I think last week I made, you know, I made a lot of jokes around uh, that things, but I'm not doing that. But what I can learn from when people go to a store to buy guns is that they are incredibly afraid of their safety. And, uh, and you know, fear is most of the time a really good motivator. <laughs> you know, if, uh, if I see a spider, you know, last week we talked about it, I run faster than I've ever could. Imagine I can run. <laughs> Right? I just forget to put on the stopwatch and see how fast I can run because I was too afraid running away from it. Now, this is also, we are afraid. We just can't run. That's the weird thing of it. We can't run. There is no way to go away. So we have to shelter uh, and find shelter in our own home. And guess what? There is someone else in our house too. That could be a spouse. That could be a sibling. could be both. Right? It could be your, your kids. And suddenly we have to figure out how to cope with them um, in a way that we haven't done for a long time. <laughs> we sit in the house with the same person for hours and hours. And if you have nothing to do, I can tell you, I guarantee you already, within a few hours, within a few days, you go up the wall and you start to try to kill each other, right? So, well, not literally, of course, right? But there is already prediction that the numbers of divorces, which is already pretty high in the United States, will even go up more because of this because people don't know how to cope with a situation like that and if you just translate it all back it's another situation you know we had a roadblock we cannot go out we have our relationships with this normally something that you need to use to be more motivated right go to the people that you trust well and um and they help you to be to be, get motivated you can't right because you cannot go out of the house so you have to find a solution inside your house right that's what you uh, that's what you need to do and that's how you need to go and motivate it so does it help to you know make a plan that's normally what a coach will say oh yeah yeah just make a plan and go what you're after you know uh, another thing that i do take a white a blank sheet of paper and really write down why you would like to see yourself in three years from now that doesn't work either because no one is able now to see past this what's going on, right? Does that make sense? Everyone is, is thinking, will it ever go over? No, the optimistic people like me, right? Uh, they say, yeah, of course, in a few weeks, everything turns back to normal. You, you know, don't worry about it, right? That, but that's not, a really, that's not really true. It will not be normal for a long time, right? And we will remember this a long time. And that doesn't really matter right? If we are here right now, right? We are here. And here is the wall that I draw, right? And I cannot see beside this point. That could be a mountain of gold in here, you know? It could be flowers, right? It could be flowers here. But if I don't see them, right? Then for my vision, they are not there. That is scientifically correct, to be honest right so if i don't see them what i typically do as a coach is help people what's on the other side and let them go through it now i'm not that powerful that i can let you see beyond <laughs> beyond what's going on in the world because i don't know so now we need to motivate ourselves maybe that's a good lesson for all us or of us or also the, the life coaches now we need to motivate ourselves in the moment we need to motivate ourselves in the moment now, uh, I tell you what helps, what works for me. What works for me is, is, you know, find a new normal. So write it down. Number one, find a new normal. Find a new good routine. You know, a lot of people online, I, I, I looked it up, they're saying, okay, 10 tips to work from home. You know, here is a better way to cope in difficult situations. Everyone talks about one thing you could do is pretend that it's the same so instead of going to the office you know you just go take a shower 
and, and you know, put on your suit if you work in a suit and then you go to your desk in the kitchen and, <laughs> and then you say, and I did that this morning, actually. <laughs> I did that this morning. I said, hello, good morning, everyone. Like I had a whole office full of people. And I, no one said something back and I was surprised and completely depressed and saying no one came to the office. I'm again, the first one in the office. No, so that doesn't really work. That is fake. We don't need to deal with fake. We need to deal with reality always, right? Now, reality is often, uh, you know, a matter of perspective. Ooh, I'm really, I'm really into, uh, you know, the drawing mode today. Did you see that? So it depends a little bit on what glasses we are wearing, right? And so, so reality is not even uh, a real thing, strange as it is. But, you know, bear with me for a moment. If you just need to work from home, just say that you work from home. Don't pretend that, oh yeah, I'm going to pretend that I'm in my office. Now, I personally like to not change my routine to wake up and go shower and stuff like that. If that's what you normally do and you feel good with it, do that too. Find your new normal, right? I give another couple of things. What is a new normal? Right? So, um, if, uh, and so you, you, you best do that with, with making a little list. What is your old normal? What is your normal routine? If you have one, right? Some people don't even have a routine, right? But if you want to be successful in life, you better work out some routines. <laughs> yeah, so we'll talk about that too. Maybe this is a good time to switch to that, right? So, um, so what is your old normal? What is your old normal? So now a couple of these things you could just straight put to the next list, right? Well, maybe I should do it this way. So you can see it. You have the old normal here. That is your list number one. And then you have your, um, okay, that's wrong. That is the S and not the two. I want to make a number two. And um, here you go. Something like that, yeah. And you go from what's your old normal to what's the list of the new normal. Don't be a judge of it. So, no, I don't like this and don't like that, right? Okay. And then what you do then, you know, say that you say, okay, I need to still, my new normal is I still need to reach customers. I need to make at least 10 phone calls a day to make sure that I can do what I need to do, right? Okay, then write it down. Okay, I still need to do 10 customers. But be immediately kind of looking at it, is that possible, right? Is that possible? Now, maybe you're a hairdresser and you're not allowed to go to your work and those people are not allowed to go to your shop. So that's out. Okay. So unfortunately, that doesn't fit in your new normal. Or maybe you are at home now and you have to take a little bit more care of the kids at home and therefore you cannot do uh, calls in the quiet space that you normally do in your office or at a coffee shop. Okay, so that's out. So there will be a lot of things that are out. Don't be a judge of it, right? There, I'm sure there are a couple of things that, that stay on there. If you eat at 12 o'clock, always, is there a reason for you now to change that while you are at home? I don't think there's any reason to eat suddenly at three o'clock because you work from home. You can still eat at 12 o'clock if that's what you normally do. If you do your exercises at seven o'clock, you know, a normal, put it down. Do your exercises at seven o'clock. There's no reason to not exercise or to suddenly say, hey, maybe I need to start today with my exercises because I don't have to go to the office first. Don't do that, right? Make a new normal. So a couple of things will stay there. And, and those are called your anchors, right? You know, just write that word down. You know, I'm going to make one here, right here. You know, I used to be a pirate, so I know what an anchor is. You know, it, it looks like that. It's a pink pirate, a pink anchor, because I, I was kind of a dancer pirate, so to speak, right? So hence the pink, uh, the pink anchor. And, uh, I'm not sure if you get that joke, but <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> and, uh, and so those are your anchors. And then maybe you have only one and maybe you have zero anchors uh, in your life. But, and what does that indicate? That actually indicates probably that you don't have a routine at all. And then you make a, a, a new list. You make a list zero and you say, maybe I should develop some, uh, some new uh, routines. And that could be a really good start. There is no way to... Uh, to find a motivation if you don't know where you are. Now, I know where you physically are, but I want to know where you mentally are, right? 
So there are people saying, oh, I can stay longer in bed. Yeah, that works for three, four days. But I can tell you procrastination in any situation, whether it is COVID-19 or COVID-18 or 20, it doesn't really matter, right? You know, procrastination is the killing of everything. And I'm sorry, that's not that there was a, normally I would say no pun intended, but it was not a really good choice of words. So I, I, uh, I regret that I said it, but you know what I mean, right? Procrastination is definitely always the wrong thing. So if you feel, which is very normal in the first day, if you work from home and you never did it, you know, you, you start to say, oh yeah, it's kind of a new thing. Let's venture, uh, watch Netflix and stuff like that. I'm sure, I'm sure if I could call the people from Netflix that it skyrockets how many, how things are streaming over the net at the moment. It's seriously true. It's seriously true. So, so I'm not saying, I'm not the person who says what you uh, need to do. There's a dark light cloud above my head do you see that i uh, i'm not uh, i'm not saying that you should uh, what you should and shouldn't do right i'm just saying make that list and then maybe you have a little bit in between list if you're already working at home for a while to say okay what did i do in the last five uh, days that actually was a little bit out of the ordinary and just write it down too yeah so there's a lot of writing but you're at home so you can you can write that Right, I just want to replace the dark cloud above my head uh, with a sun above my head. And um, so do that too. And what does that list le learn you in this case? It learns you that you were a little bit out of the ordinary for a moment. That's great. That's really good. You know, but with going to success and just bear with me for a moment because say, oh, there you have him again. He's still talking about success and destiny and stuff like that. You know, <clears throat> but being successful has a lot to do with discipline. And discipline has a lot to do with knowing your routines and what are the right routines and the wrong routines. And if you could replace the word routines, and if I would write really fast and, and wipe it out really fast, I would probably write it for you, is habits. So this morning I talked to someone saying, hey, I took this time to, you know, relook at my habits. Because some of the habits I can't do anymore and maybe I don't need them actually in my life. Hmm, I thought that was really good. Right, I, I picked up a new habit when I started to work from home uh, a little bit more. I started to drink a whole lot more coffee. And is that smart? Not really smart actually, but I, I just did it. Is that harmless? Yeah, it's kind of a little bit harmless in this case, but you know, I'm, while saying it, I triggered myself in taking a sip of my coffee. And, um, but so, so you could look at that. You say, hey man, things are seeping in. Yeah, if that's, I hope that's a good word, but they seep in your life. When life gets shaken up, right? Um, let's say that life shows up with a little bit of cracks in there and things are starting to trickle in. They seep in your life when things are becoming uncertain, right? Uh, when they become fearful and when they become doubtful, right? So in last week, we call that FUD you know, and uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So, and when that happens, I can tell you already, right, that um, things are showing up uh, that you don't even know. Things are seeping in. Now, in my case, what um, was going in, I drink way more coffee. I didn't even notice it until uh, I started to buy more coffee. And that's one of the first thing, I didn't need more toilet paper right? I needed more coffee. That's what I needed. <laughs> All right. So that's what I was going to buy. And I started to say, hey, now is that, and that ends up in that little in-between list. And I thought, ah, that's actually not so bad, right? But there are other things that I definitely need to take care of. I move a lot less. You know, I'm a dance teacher, so I move probably about three hours a day, at least. I move a lot less. If I would draw this line, what I'm doing right now, and here comes the quintessence of what I am trying to teach you today. You know, your future is always an extension of the line what you are doing today. You know, a week ago, your line was different. Your today line, that's your reality. I know maybe in four weeks times, everything goes back to normal. We can talk, we do this talk again. We switch back <laughs> to the other line and you're good to go, but you don't know. And since you don't know, you might as well think very carefully about what's your new line. 
So my new line, I already saw it. I said, oh my, <laughs> I just exercise a lot less. Now I have a lot of excuses. I have a lot of work and I need to set up all this homework and you know working from home and stuff like that. So no, 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 Jean, don't worry about it. You will get back in shape. And 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 then yesterday I was uh, I was you know I, I came uh, I came back from doing some some grocery and I thought you know what let me take a run. And <laughs> yeah, the run was about as long as the thought about running because after a few hundred meters, I was already, oh my gosh, this is hard. How is that possible? Well, I've been working so hard behind my computer, sitting the whole day drinking coffee, which dehydrates you. And in a matter of days, I could feel that my stamina went down. I crushed completely, right? Because I almost, I deprived myself from a lot of sleep. Um, I probably have more worries on my mind than I dare to admit on, on video here, but I'm a normal human being like you are, so I worry too. I just have a very positive look at things. It doesn't mean that I don't worry, right? That's why I have to put the sun above my head. I need to do that on purpose. But seriously, and if you dare to admit these things, that's when you move forward really fast and get really motivated to do things, right? I took a run. And it took me a few minutes to already feel like, wow, is that possible? I said, oh yeah, because I only had two, three hours of sleep last night. Okay, that's, that's normal. Or maybe there's something else going on. You know, the only thing that I could say is let, okay, let me find a way in this new situation to do as much exercises that I believe are good for me, right? Now, you cannot always be the judge of that, by the way. Leave that up to the help people, right? You know, if you never... If you always sit on the couch anyhow, you say, oh yeah, my new normal is actually the same as my old normal. You know, where there are people who actually were already sitting on the couch the whole day and they're now complaining that the whole, whole world changed. The whole world didn't change for them at all. It's about time that you change your world now. Does that make sense? So, well, typically they don't call in the place because they rather bench work Netflix, right? But the people, the doers are now a little bit more in flux. Now, I know another person uh, online and she said, well, I cannot do my job. And her job is actually cutting people's hair. And well, it costs way more than cutting people people's hair i know that you know but just forgive me that not using the right word but one thing that we had to do was actually upgrade and you know uh, put a little bit more content on our website yeah i mean that's a kind of a thing that we can do right now right so that is where you see the holes in your list right you say you remember i still wake up at seven i still go to the shower we can still all do that i still need to exercise at seven o'clock in the night or whatever you do right and then you can fill up um but there are some gaps in there and then you start to think about what can i do with those gaps and that is the moment when you start to think about your passion and your destiny, your purpose again. Are there things in that gap that I can still do? Now, maybe there are a couple of things that you cannot do, right? So uh, if you are a ballroom dancer and you are in the midst of trying to practice in a large room and you can't do that, then you can immediately say, I can't do it because I'm not in a ballroom. Okay, maybe you can do it in a small ballroom. Or maybe, you know, I, I don't know what that is, but try to be a little bit inventive right there. But I can tell you, if you look at these little boxes that you, um, that you wanna fill, right? And try to find motivation for the little boxes, right? So you have all these boxes and some of these boxes are exactly the same as they were, just one box, it is, oh, I should do that the other way around, right? But you get it, and the, but there's one box, or maybe there's two, or maybe there's three, or maybe there's four, but go one by one and think about what is more sensible to do. Okay, now let's take a few things right straight out of your life, right? Straight out of your life. Let, let's take the important things first. One of the important things that is in your life is relationship, right? Now, say you come across that box, and you say, hey, man, um, maybe I can do something that has something to do with my passion and destiny that has something to do with relationships. Okay, then you just, that's the moment when you take out your journal, <laughs> right? And you remember yourself. And if you don't, then this is a good moment to write that down. What was my longer term goal about relationships? Right, and typically you have there, you know, I wanna have a loving relationship, we wanna be supportive to each other, stuff like that. Judge a little bit what you're doing 
right now. Are you supporting each other or not? Stuff like that. You, or, or is the tension a little bit higher? Hmm. If the tension is higher, think, okay, this is definitely not helping in my relationship, right? So set some time aside and go to the person or the people that you are talking to and saying, hey, man, this is not the relationship that I had in mind. We are forced now to a new situation. Uh, but I still would like to have this loving relationship with you guys, but it's not working the way we're doing it today. Yes, of course, I understand that, but that it's all because we are in a new situation and stuff like that. Okay, it's not so new anymore. It's already 10 days old and things are moving so fast that the new, the old is, so, the new is so quickly old that we have to figure it out today. So do that. Don't postpone that, you know, have that conversation today with your husband, with your wife, with your children, whatever it is, you know, reassess, you know, what you do. You know, what would you do if you live for the next 10 years with the people in the same house? Would that be still be the person you want to live with in the same house for 10 years? Yes or no. And probably you have no choice there at this moment. So you better figure it out. That sounds really hard, but that's better than going in your mind and saying, oh my gosh, I did not know that this person was so annoying. I live with him already for 10 years, but I had no idea that he could be so annoying. Actually, another friend made a joke of me. I said, now that I work from home, the first three days, I, I, you know, I cannot go to my sports clubs anymore. I cannot go to the bar anymore. And I, you know, sitting home and I sitting working behind my computer. And then for the last few days, I already saw this strange woman sitting on the couch. And I was wondering, who is she? And then I figured out, oh, that's my wife. <laughs> You know, it sounds like a joke and it is a little bit of a joke, but that is an opportunity, you know, because often, how often do we have an opportunity to truly learn uh, about the people that we live in the same house? So that could be in that box, right? I didn't do this box. I didn't say you have to do that for the rest of your day, only in that new little box that you might have open. Right? Maybe you don't have an open box. I don't know. Maybe you, like I said, maybe you were already used to sit on the couch the whole day. And so you don't have to come up with something new. Uh, although I would advise you <laughs> to come up with something new anyhow. Right? So don't try to motivate yourself to say, okay, let me reinvent the whole wheel again. And I'm going to motivate yourself. And I'm, I'm doing it again. A little bit right now right we had all these little boxes and, and i make circles of them right now some of these circles can be exactly the same right in a daily routine and some of these circles cannot i cannot see from you some of these circles need to be slightly different right and and for some people they're all of these circles uh, that needs to be different and and i'm sorry for you if that is true you know, and then I definitely offer that we could do an offline talk and help you through that. I seriously offer that to anyone online because I care about these things. But for a lot of us people, not every circle has to be different. Some people have the same responsibilities, whether they go to the office or not. You know, say that you're a manager. Do you suddenly have different uh, uh, responsibilities? No. If you're a salesperson, often, you know, your sales numbers, they, they, they are, you know, at risk, but they don't lower your sales numbers because your accounts are all over the world and normally you call them, you know, <clears throat> from your office and now you can call them from home. So what is the difference, right? Um, if you're a dance teacher like me, oh yeah, <laughs> that's a huge difference. You know, a lot of people that I teach, that I teach privately, and you can only teach them private lessons so far on, uh, on a video screen. Now, uh, 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 one of my students in Tokyo, he just had a simple question to me. He said, you know, Jean, I know we're online, and, and it was his normal mental coaching talk. He didn't, didn't even want to ask me, but he asked me, hey, can you tell me the difference between a check forward walk and a Latin cross? Now, if you don't know what I'm saying, you know, you need to come to my dance lessons. But anyhow, if you know something about uh, dancing, this is the thing. So I just give him a, a lesson technical lesson i put the video on the floor show him my legs and feet and uh, and stuff like that and so we did the dinner lesson so for some extent i had things that are almost the same yeah so pretend that all these things are nicely colored in yellow i don't have the time to do that they just appear to be a little bit different there are also things that are appearing to be the same 
but they are actually different in sight. Think about the relationships that I talked about. In the beginning, it was kind of the same. We just came home, I, come, I, I see the same person at home, but living with that same person for 24 hours in a day right now, it only appears the same, but it is actually completely different, right? Does that make sense? That's why, uh, forgive me for my crappy drawing, but I hope you, you get the point, right? And there are definitely things that are completely different, right? So you have these three situations. You have situations that appear different, but they are actually the same, you know? Think about my student in Japan, right? I could still teach him dance, there's nothing wrong. I just don't, cannot do it in the amount of numbers that I did, but actually in this case, this student, it didn't change for him at all. He calls me once in a week and we still calls me once in a week, right? But I had the feeling I had to do it differently, right? And then there are things that look the same, but they are different in sight. Often you find it in a relationship right okay and then there are things that are completely different i'll take myself as an example the people that uh, take pure dance lessons right uh, on the floor and they, they just don't they don't do it they just don't they just say you know what we'll pick it up when everything goes back to normal now guess what i don't know what normal is so i can't wait for that i have to reinvent my new normal at least for the next couple of days. If I know for a fact that this would end at 3 a, uh, April the 3rd, that's okay, we can plan that. But the, the lack of motivation and the, and the fear and the uncertainty is because we don't know. And since we don't know, start to plan so that you do know. We always live in uncertainty and we always live in doubts. And guess what that's called, remember? That is called fate, going and do things anyhow. That is fate right? If you don't operate from faith, I can guarantee you, you always operate from fear, right? And that stops you regardless what the situation is. So you can do that. So figure out really quickly uh, whether the sun is still shining. And now it all comes full circle right here, you know, no pun intended, you know, whether the sun is exactly shining the same for you as it did before. Don't pretend, you know, be uh, very honest whether the sun only appears to shine the same for you for me it doesn't right or whether you need to look at a completely different sun and how will you look at that you know do you need to change your sunglasses you know to get a different perspective of life and um, you know spend an hour or two on on this little uh, little thing that i gave you right so, and, and it motivates you, I promise you, but if you have too many circles or, you know, boxes that you have to reinvent, um, just give me a call or send me a PM and I promise you, we'll set up a call and I help you through it, right? Uh, strangely enough, I have been busy for the last 10, 12 days because I came up with a whole new box that I felt we needed to do. And it, it, it's, it's weird how that went. And I, when I started to think about that new box, I did not know that I actually would have the time to work from home. And it was absolutely necessary to have the time of home to create what I wanted to create. So it, it, it felt a little bit like I normally operate, that I was a little bit ahead of my own reality. And when you are in charge of your own circumstances, life looks a lot nicer than when you're not. So that brings back to one of the quotes that I always like, and it's definitely not mine, but we don't have any influence or maybe a little bit to the circumstances we are in. And I wanna end with this, we always can choose how we react to our circumstances. Now here's the thing, do you react from it from a passive point of view or can you actually anticipate and be proactive, you know? So replace the word react and see where you can be proactive. You cannot be proactive on every, everything, right? So wrong proactiveness is hoarding. That is the wrong proactiveness. That is pure reaction, right? Buying a tons of ammunition, that's maybe also a crazy thing to do. And if you do that, by the way, in Texas, it's not so weird to do that at all. Then, and I didn't want to insult you at all. But what I want you to do is uh, try to do, try to also figure out what are the things that I do because I'm really afraid, and what are the two that I still do um, that uh, that I can be productive, right? Uh, you know, I will do in a few weeks. I will do uh, a session on am I a consumer 
or am I a producer? Right? And very quickly, I saw people today around me becoming consumers of life. Bench work, watch network, uh, Netflix, and all that kind of things. And that's good for a few days. But become a producer, again, of life. That is who we are at the place. Those are people that produce in life, that help people in life, you know, that are positive in life, even though the circumstances don't uh, feel like it you know and and even though through the clouds we cannot see the sun but we know there is always a sun behind it and that is true right now too i can only imagine of the generation of my dad so we make another full circle today he's 96 so he's born in 1924 and he was 16 when well actually he was 17 when world war ii you know happened in his country where he lived at that time and that time was uh uh, that was in, in Indonesia and they were occupied by Japan. And if you know something about it, that was cruel, right? That was more than cruel. A lot of his family was killed and he was put in, uh, in camp like, like m most of his siblings. So he went through a lot of awful times. His brother, my uncle Pete, he worked on the Burma railroad. I am sure, I am positively sure because I talked to the men, that there were times that they believed there is no end to what we are doing here. They had no clue how long the railroad was that they had to build, right? They had no clue. There were a lot of people who killed themselves because they think this agony, this pain, this uncertainty and fear will never end. But the people who actually kept believing that it will end, that we will prevail, you know, they made the best out of it as possible. There's a beautiful movie about it, Bridge Over the River Kwai, you know, see it. It's a lot about inspiration and believing that you need to go on and making the right choices, so look that. So, but my dad lived in a world war. And then right after the World War II ended, in his country, another world, uh, another uh, war started. So he did not live five years in war. They almost lived eight years in war. And believe me, I know my dad, he believed that it would never end. And after the world, after he came to a place that was much more safe for him, safety became his key word in life. And that was the only thing he operated from. And unfortunately, I must say, although I love my dad, he kept his world really small of that really bad period that he had in life. And I regret that he had to live through it. And I'm happy that he lived through it at the same time. Otherwise, I would not be here and you guys would all be looking at a blank screen because no one was talking then. So that would be really awkward. But, you know, I am here. My dad lived there. He lived a good life. He did good things for us. And it sounds like my obituary to him. So <laughs> forgive me for that, but it's not. I just want to say that he made really good choices in life. But one life, one thing choice he always made was he kept running his life only thinking about safety, 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 safety. And for that, he kept his world and for some of my siblings for a long time, very small. And I don't want you to be there. There is way more than that. And I know you need to be in your house and maybe your house is small or full of other people, but that doesn't mean that you have to keep your life small. So that's where I want to end it today. It's a little bit long talk. I think I was a little bit inspired to deliver this to you. So if you have any questions on Facebook Live or if you have any questions uh, in the chat, then let me know that, uh, guys, um, because this would be a good time. I will address some. And then as always, I, uh, I, I close it off for the people on Facebook and we'll continue for a few minutes more here on Facebook. Look out. Can you put the glasses on, John? Oh yeah, I can put the glasses on. <laughs> but I don't have them right here. Oh wait, I do. <laughs> It's a little bit out of context right now, but this is was, and I should do that, right? This is one, you know, I have a different perspective in life. <laughs> okay, so that that was that, uh, and um, you know, if you don't, if you can't keep your humor in, then. Uh, then did you not see that Jasmine is very quiet today? It means she's perfectly still there in her blue background. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, so any questions? Any questions? There she is. Oh, she also put glasses on. <laughs> Anyhow, any questions or any remarks uh, that you think maybe, oh man, this is totally nonsense or what are the things that you, I hope not, by the way, what are the things that you, that you took away from this? What are the things that you learned? And what are the things that you promised me to implement right after this call? 
promise me. And sometimes you don't always believe what I say, but most of the people who followed my coaching and they still did it, they actually saw afterwards, actually there was no bad advice. So in this case, I am very confident and convinced that the advice that I gave you is actually a good one. All the circles, all the circles, right? Okay, just give me a, give me a, give me a comment. Yeah? Anything, no one? No one? Oh, if that's true, then I'll, uh, you know, is there someone, Irene on, on, live, on Facebook Live who had the question that I need to address? No? All right, everyone is very quiet, I guess. It's a serious time. And uh, if, if anyone uh, on, um, here on Zoom wants to let me know what they have learned, then that will be a good thing to do. And we have at least one thing to talk about. And in the meantime, I say goodbye to the people on Facebook. Uh, since it's one o'clock. I'll hope to see you next week, by the way, again, with a new topic. It's probably close to this one, but if the time settles a little bit, uh, uh, maybe already, then maybe I can come up with something else. I, I already wanted to do something around motivation. And so I'll, I'll bring that in in another context. I actually prepared for you an awesome, an awesome thing about motivation. Um, and Jasmine said, sorry, I have to run. Of course, of course, I know you're busy. You're on the phone the whole day with people who need some awesome uh, financial advice. By the way, that's a good thing if you have to. Can I do that for a moment, uh, Jasmine? I give a little bit of commercial for you guys. You know, yeah, it's a lot of people, they forgot to take care of themselves financially. Uh, if it comes to an insurance, a life insurance, or another type of insurance, this is a really good moment, you know. There might be quickly a freeze of it when we're not allowed to do that anymore because insurance company might say we don't know what's going on we kept the we kept the insurance for right now that's not an unthinkable scenario so if you don't have that in order you better act quick and one of the best people that i know to do that with is jasmine yasuda you know type it in jasmine you're still on facebook live so uh so so go for it here contact me for financial seminar just jasmine yasuda jasmine yasuda at gmail.com i will put it in facebook for you jasmine and by the way she and i worked often together and i'm sure one of these days we plan another workshop together where we do some motivation and financial planning at the same time sorry to be a little bit commercial but you know this is typically the work that i do out there and often together with Jasmine. And since we have to do it from home, why not do this, right? So uh, forgive me, I, I try not to do be commercial at the place, but so I had to do that. Thank you for being here, Jasmine. I'll see you next time. Um, and then thank you for being here. I'll see you next week. <laughs>